Hey, hi there, Libra. Welcome to my channel. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to those energies and influences that are coming through for your monthly reading for money for October of 2019. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, this is a condensed general reading. Please only take the portions that resonate with you. Okay, Libra, off camera to save time, I've done a protective blessing. I've meditated over and shuffled these cards just for you. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere. It's the background and the basis of the matter. Number 13 of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck. The death card. This can be a Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. This is a card of having to let go. It's a change. It's a renewal with a transformation. There's an ending, a closure, and then regeneration. This transformation is followed by renewal. This can be in the consciousness, the birth of new ideas and new opportunities after a time of pause and reflection and discovering what no longer fits. This is a dying away of old habits or old fears or old hopes and old ways of dealing with the world or old relationships. This experience can seem shattering, but if we welcome change, we find that death leads to new life and new opportunities. It's an opening to something more important. This new ending must be faced because you're about to enter a new dimension in your life. In this position, it's something that's already flowing into the past. This is a letting go of someone or something. It's creating closure in this new life to follow for the better. But the old ways must first be destroyed to make way for the new that is coming into being. It's the end of a cycle. It's putting the past behind you. It's something that you've outgrown, a part of you. It's a new belief system. It's old habit patterns being shaken off. It's transforming yourself. Second card. And this is the energy that's crossing over your path. Number three of the major arcana, the empress. This could be a Libra, you, or a Taurus, sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Venus is the ruler to this planet. This is relating and natural growth. This is someone that's ready to help make their life work better through bringing about cooperation in their environment. This card speaks about someone who's endowed with the ability to listen and understand. They're able to be a representation of of beauty, harmony, as well as the ability to create both. This reminds us if we are gentle and caring, we can create fertility. This card can signify a marriage or commitment to union, or the very least a good friendship. This is a good indication of support. Financial and emotional support available. This is your hard work paying off being fertile and creative and compassionate, nurturing, generous, doting, someone prosperous and comfortable and healthy. They could be doing things like mothering or nurturing, caretaking, for yourself or others, showing hospitality, hospitality, great, uh, freely giving, openly receiving, appreciating, or creating beauty and savoring comfort. You could be making or spending money and thriving, being caring and motherly. There's fertility represented. Do not be too skeptical if things seem to be too good to be true. Now, the death card with the empress card, this can be lassitude, that means mental weariness or a lack of energy, especially after an illness, could be psychological sex problems like impotence. The death card and the empress, this could be, this is a couple different energies coming here, this could be uh, a story about litigation or a, life, a long time relationship will end because of a perceived grievance you have delivered to the other person. 
It resolves around not realizing the effect you have on others as you pursue your pleasures that you take out take out of the daily struggle. You just might lose touch with how the world conducts itself. And now your third card. This is how it affects you. This can be your attitude. This is the Eight of Swords, Libra, air energy. You're feeling bound, stuck. It has to do with the thoughts in your mind. This is someone's Jupiter in Gemini. This is a temporary endurance. It has to do with that state of mind. It might be some limiting beliefs, or it could be a possible accident that might interfere. This is bondage. It's fear to move out of the situation. It's you that can change matters. It's a bad situation that is temporary. You might be feeling trapped, making excuses, or using some victim mentality. You'll, use, you'll need to use courage to think in a new way and cast off bonds and obligations. This is not seeing clearly ahead. This can be confused about what to do. You might be afraid to make the wrong decision. Could be frustrated, feeling like you're hemmed in, blind to possibilities, resisting or accepting limitations or restraints. Someone might be wanting to be rescued. Could be someone that dislikes their work, but they do it anyway. And now your fourth card. It's the position of the future. It's the outcome, the results, and the advice. I'll be giving you some more combination meanings coming up. This is the Seven of Swords. Air energy again. This is someone that's being sneaky and deceptive, tiptoeing around, using evasive strategy. Someone's moon in Aquarius. It's mind games, deceit and lies, someone stealing ideas. Could even be a stealth over the internet, someone doing research. Could be someone stealing peace of mind. Could be someone that's always looking for something but they don't know where to look. Could be a sneak attack or someone stealing trust. There may be a need for you to avoid a confrontation in order to reach the right decision about someone or something. You'll need to have the courage of your dreams and the strength to face the unsolved puzzles of your life. Might be someone that's running from the truth. This would have to do with that litigation. These are mental tests, deception, it's gathering information. Someone might have broken an agreement. Someone may have stolen from you or someone you might have stolen from. This is sneaking around behind someone else's back, not someone not being up front. You'll need to use mental preparedness and take measures not to lose something. You're being acutely aware of your current situation. Someone might have used underhanded tactics. You'll need to stand guard over what you value, your heart or your possessions. The Justice card with the Empress card. Justice card is next. This can be a powerful woman or a patron, patroness. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card. The underlying issue. This is what's unseen. Number 11 of the Major Arcana. Justice. This can be a Libra. You. Sun, moon, rising, or Venus. This has to do with balance and legal matters karma. Justice will be done because balance is required and lawsuits will be won. This has to do with equity and rightness and the triumph of the deserving side in law. This is fair-minded treatment. It's standing strong against things trying to throw you off balance. It's a time to weigh a situation's factors to make a reasoned assessment, a judgment of the matter. 
I also cautious to be prudent and careful and deliberate calmly and carefully before you take any action. Actions always carry consequences. The death card with the justice card. This is a passage with care through a difficult situation. A need for faith could be a lack of confidence is dangerous in this situation. This is a successful passage, passage through a difficult experience, its trauma and its effects. It's converted slowly into growth. The death with the Empress card, this is a, a long-time relationship that will end because of perceived grievances you have delivered to the other person. This is the Seven of Swords with a Justice card. That, th that thief is being caught. It's uh, someone that has to do with litigation, bearing fruit. And your lawyers like to hear this. The Eight of Swords with the Justice card. That criminal gets caught and they go to jail. And now your advice from the Oracle deck. Ask your guides by Sonia Choquette. Gemini or Libra here, you've got balance. Card number 36, Divine Teachers, balance. Well, that surely does fit. Has to do with support, codependency, manipulation, and generosity. You're in the delicate process of learning how to properly balance the flow of give and take in your personal relationships. And it's time to evaluate how you're doing. Are you giving too much, leaving you resentful and angry? Or are you withholding when you should give more, leaving you feeling guilty and defensive? Your divine teachers can help you learn how to better align your relationships so you can neither give nor take too much as a means of controlling others. They counsel you to be honest about your motivations when dealing with others. You know in your heart of hearts what drives you to your interest in them. Do you give with the secret agenda of you owe me, or do you create dependency and, and control and over others with your kindness? Or do you withhold for out of fear that you might be taken advantage of, keeping people guessing about your motives and your intentions? Your divine teachers are on hand to help you answer these questions. They lovingly assure you that relationships are the most difficult of all spiritual classrooms, and the lessons of proper give and take are the most difficult of skills to learn. Have compassion for yourself as you seek balance with others. Ask your divine teachers to help you become more aware of how you give and receive in all relationships, not just the romantic kind. Their message to you, there's no difference between giving and receiving love. Thanks, you guys, Libra. I hope you stay tuned in and leave me a comment or a thumbs up. And please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.